Hey there, Tekken One Math Project. This is Coach Saiful with your daily dose of math mastery, and today we have our final question on our assessment paper. All right, this is all about factorization. It should be chicken feet to most of you, so let's just just straight away move into it. All right. So the questions are these: six p squared q plus nine p q squared r plus twelve p q r. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside, and I'm gonna write it down. Oh, I can't see it. <laughs> Okay, never mind. A, 6P squared Q plus 9PQ squared R plus 12PQ R. Okay, when it comes for something like this, all you have to do is you have to remember, when factorization is concerned, you have to take step by step. You have to take the terms differently. So you take the coefficients first. Coefficients are the numbers in front. So what is the common factor or what is the highest common factor in this case? It is, of course, 3. It's not 6 because 9 cannot be divided by that. So we have to take 6. So first off, we take, uh, so we take 3. We take 3. And then we take a look at the P. There are P squared. Okay. There are P and there are P. So what is the most, the, the highest common factor is P. Okay, not P squared. Okay, because the rest don't have a P squared on top of them. Then for the Q, we have Q, we have Q, we have Q. So definitely we can put in a Q. And how about R? Can we put R? No, because this one over here doesn't have an R. So from here, all you have to do is just put in the numbers that is um, it will give you the answer of, for example, this one. So 3PQ times what gives you 6P squared Q? Again, take a look at it step by step. 3 times what gives you 6? It gives you 2. What times P gives you P squared? Of course, it is P. Now, of course, Q times 1 gives you Q. So just leave it there. And then you put a plus sign. And then you put, of course, 3 times what gives you 9 is 3 then go on, P is times what gives you P is 1, so we just leave it blank. Q times what gives you Q squared, the answer is Q. And then we have an R at the back. And then we have plus, what times 3 gives you 12, the answer is 4. P times 1 gives you P, Q times 1 gives you Q, and then we have R. Is that the final answer? Yes, it is. It's very simple. Okay, now for part B, let's move on to factorization for part B. Uh, part B question is, 3, 2s minus t plus 4u. I'm going to write this down. 3, 2s minus t plus 4u. Okay. And then we have next part. Plus 2s plus 15t minus 6u. Plus 2s plus 15t plus 2s, sorry. Plus 15t minus 16u. So you will get from here, okay, what must you do? First off, you got to expand this one. So 3 times 2s gives you 6s. 3 times minus t gives you minus 3t. Uh, plus 4u times 3 gives you what? Gives you 12u. Plus 12u. Then of course you plus 2s, you plus 15t, and then you minus 16u. Keep in the rest. Okay, and then you just add the s, t's and u's together. 6s plus 2s gives you 8s. Minus 3t plus 15t gives you plus 12t plus 12u minus 16u gives you minus 4u so again we are back at the same spot where we have to look for the common factors so again take the numbers out first what are the numbers the number 4 8 12 of course the answer is 4 and do we have any other common factors no we don't so again we just go back into the brackets 4 times what gives you 8 2 4 okay then all you have to do is just keep the rest of the thing in so 2s plus 4 times 3 gives you 12t minus what's the 4u? Keep it as u. So that is the answer. Pretty straightforward, like I said. Okay. So if you got this right, high five. You are a math prodigy. Good job. We're gonna move on to question number C. No, question part C. Part C, factorization. We're moving on very fast over here. 2a minus 3ac. 2a minus 3ac. Let me take the, uh, what's the next part? Plus 4b minus 6c. Plus 4b minus 6c. Okay, for this kind of questions, you have to remember that it's all about grouping them. And then after only, what you're going to do is, after you group them, you have to put them into factorization. So now 2a minus 3ac. So which one do you group together? Okay, first off, is actually, to be honest, it's up to you. Um, I would pick the c with the c, but you know, doesn't work out that way either. 
So let's just pick this first two together and then we take the other two, which is this and this together. Let's see what we get. Okay, let's just try this out. Okay, 2a and 3ac, we have the common factor of a and then we have 2 minus 3c and then we have plus, uh, this is very important, plus. 4 and 6, we have common factor 2. Okay, and then we have 2b minus 3c. Okay, so what is wrong here? Something is a bit off. 2a minus 3ac plus 4b minus 6. Oh, I forgot to put in the b to the question. There's actually a b over here. It's a b over here. So 6bc, therefore what you get is you should actually take out 2b and then you will have this 2b, 2 minus 3c. So again, we have the common factors. We have common terms over here. 2 minus 3c, 2 minus 3c. So we just copy it down. 2 minus 3c. And then we put a plus 2b, and then we get the answer. That is all about it. <laughs> that's, that's it. It's simple, right? You got it right, high five. You are a math prodigy. Good job. And then we're going to move on to the last final question of the day and for the week, actually. And that's part D. For part D, the question says 3ac minus 4bc. I'm going to take this down slowly now. Minus 6ad plus 8. Minus 6 what? <laughs> 6 AD plus 8 BD. Plus 8 BD. Okay, now we can group them together very quickly. Um, what would you do? It's actually up to you. You can actually group anything you want here. So for me, I think I'll just group the first two for convenience. Okay, and the second two later. So 3 AC, what is the common term? The common term is C. So what do you get? You get 3 A minus 4 B. Uh, this is the important part. Huh? Minus. What is the common term here? It's actually 2, and hence you will get uh, sorry, 2D, sorry, 2D. And then you have 3A. Okay, minus times what gives you a plus? Correct, minus. Therefore, you have 2 times what gives you 8? You have 4, and then you have a B at the end. So 3A minus 4B is the same, so keep it down. And then finally, you have C minus 2D, and that is the final answer. Wow, that was a speedy factorization I had there. <laughs> but anyways, that's all there is to it. When you practice, for example, these last two questions, it's, you, you straight away can see that it's all about grouping them together. It's very simple. So again, like I said, it's, the core of the week is simply to practice. The more I practice, the easier it gets. The more I practice, the easier it gets. With that, this is Coach Simon signing off. And remember, just practice to get higher grades. You are a math prodigy. Good job.